Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my December favorites. Today is the last day that I'm filming and sitting down in front of my wintry background. So after the next few videos, we're gonna go back to the old background, so just be prepared for that. But let me tell ya, December felt like a lifetime to me. I uploaded pretty much every day of December, minus Christmas, and then the last two days, I kind of was like, all right, I gotta take a break before the new year. But I pretty much uploaded every single day in December. December. Jose's parents came for a full seven days. I couldn't even really keep track of what makeup I was trying, but I was really also only testing a lot of older products because we were doing a lot of roundup videos and very theme specific videos. So I didn't get to really venture off and try products on the side. But you know, I still came together with a list of the beauty products that I've been obsessed with in December, just products that I find I really keep grabbing for in between videos. And if it's not in the video, I'm still using it on this side. So let's get into it. We'll start off with complexion. I don't have too much complexion. I've just been kind of working my way through my foundation and concealer collection, just using a new one just to make my rounds. But a setting powder that I've been consistently reaching for is the Makeup forever ultra hd setting powder this is such a beautiful setting powder you guys it just makes the skin look really really smooth and does set the makeup in all day i just feel like my skin looks better when i wear this so i picked this up during the most recent sephora viv sale and there's something about it that's just a great solid setting powder. It does everything I want it to do. It doesn't leave a white cast. It leaves the skin looking soft. It blurs the pores. It blurs the skin and it lasts a really long time. Like it's just a solid setting powder. I feel like it's a little bit of a heavier powder. It's not going to like fly up into the air like some powders because it really packs in and holds the oils so if you have oily skin i also think you would really really like this so this has just been an all-around great setting powder i've been absolutely loving using it compared to lighter powders sometimes with lighter powders i like to go in with a sponge and press the powder in i feel like i get a similar look with this when i just use a brush because there's something about the way that it packs onto the skin that really is so perfecting so i've been loving this highly recommend it the next product is a very very new product to me i only tried it a few days ago but i just need to let you know i've been using it every day since and i'm obsessed it is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick, particularly in the shade Happy Soul. I did a whole review. I'm still playing with the powder, so I can't give you my final thoughts on that one yet. I'm still kind of figuring it out. But I reviewed this shade and another shade of the bronzer stick. If you're around my complexion, Happy Soul is perfect. Now this is a true bronzer stick. It's not going to be a contour stick, so it leans a little bit more warm, but this is such a malleable product. Whatever way you like to apply your cream products, you're able to do that. There's so much versatility. If you like to use a brush, a sponge, your fingers, it's going to blend out beautifully no matter what. It does not disrupt the product underneath. It gives such a beautiful warmth to the skin. Now once we get towards the deeper tones, I did see that they run a little bit more on the red side so just be wary of that and just go in knowing it's not going to be a true contour stick but the formulation on this blends out so easily and it lasts a really long time it works great without products on top like powder but it also works great if you put a powder over top this is a solid solid bronzer stick i think a lot of you guys are going to like it rare beauty did a fabulous job with this this next product is an older product but i found i've been using it a lot at first i didn't love it i didn't love the shade that i picked up it's a bit too harsh but lately, to touch up, finish off, redefine my face, I've been loving the Wayne Goss Radiance Boosting Face Palette. So I have the shade Satin Bronze, and honestly, when I first used this, those first few months that I had it, I wasn't crazy about it. This shade right here, the medium taupe, really is quite harsh. It's very, very deep, but this is gonna be the cooler color. And I really only felt comfortable going into the bronzer color, and even then I was like, it's a bit heavy. I struggle with this when I'm going in with a big brush and buffing it out, but I've really been loving it for touch-ups or specific contouring areas. So this is never really the main color or product that I'm using to bronze and sculpt, 
but I use it to finish off the look. Like I would probably put a very light touch with my brush in this and just sweep it over my cream bronzer just to give it a little extra glowiness, but to also set it down. Or today what I did, because the Rare Beauty is so warm, I took the tiniest little bit of the contour shade and just put it right in the hollows of my cheek to really define and sculpt that area. So I found my use for this and I've been loving it for those added extra areas of definition that I need. Not a big fan of using this on its own, but it's been very, very useful in that sense this month. Next product that we have is a blush that I've been loving. This is from Milani. It is their Cheek Kiss powder blush palette. The other two shades are fine. The shade I don't use too much because it's it's too deep for me. The pink is really pretty though, but it's this blush right here, the orange one that I'm talking about. I don't like warm blushes too often, but there really is something special about this one. I have it on my cheek today. It looks really soft on the skin and has a very subtle golden glow to it. It lasts a really long time, which is what I was worried about because sometimes drugstore blushes, the downfall of them is the longevity. Don't have an issue with this. It reminds me a lot of the Pat McGrath Desert Orchid, which is my favorite warm blush of all time. This is a little bit brighter, whereas Desert Orchid is definitely more warm and a little bit more deep. So they aren't dupes for one another, but they're both like the only two warm blushes that I really, really love. So I've been loving this orange blush. It blends out super easily. And the best part is that it's affordable. I think Milani did a fabulous job for this. It's been so easy for me to reach for. And I think besides loving the color, the other reason why I love it is because it blends out on the cheek. I don't need to spend any time buffing and blending with this. Beautiful, super easy to use. Kudos to you, Milani. I discovered two eyebrow pencils that I really, really love. So the first one is from Florisys. Oh my goodness. I just find I really love Asian eyebrow products because they just get me. <laughs> There's something about the consistency of their pencils that I really love because they don't go the creamy route with them. They go the more waxy route. And I think that just gives me so much more control with drawing my brows but you still don't have to press too hard to get the color it's just perfect it's a nice cool color you like more of a waxy yet it still is quite pigmented brow pencil I think you will really like this one and then can we just talk about the packaging oh it is absolutely stunning I've been loving this one it's very very precise as well when I'm looking for something a little bit more quick and dirty I found an eyebrow product from the drugstore that is that waxy consistent that I prefer. This is the Maybelline Total Temptation Eyebrow Pencil. So this has been out for a while, but I recently discovered it. It's the one that has this weird rounded spoolie, which I'm not necessarily too partial to, but you know, it, it works. It gets the job done. You can brush your eyebrows out. That it, it works good. The pencil itself is a little bit thicker than what I'm used to, but I've been liking this for quick and dirty brows just to quickly fill in. And again, it's nothing too creamy, so you can kind of go a little crazy with it and it's not going to blend out and look like mush in your eyebrows. So for quick and dirty eyebrows, I've been loving this one from Maybelline. Getting into eyeshadow palettes, I have one single eyeshadow that I wanted to share with you. I wore this on New Year's Eve and it was so stunning. I don't reach for this eyeshadow formula enough, but the MAC Dazzle Shadow in the shade I like to watch. So I used the NARS Climax eyeshadow palette as the base for my look, but I wanted a little something more of a voom, you know, for the time of year. I wanted some glitter. So I grabbed this and I just popped it on my lid and it completely finished the look. And I just was reminded how amazing this formula is. The way that it glimmers, it's not too distracting, but when the light hits, you're like, oh, that is absolutely stunning. It has a a slight kind of plummy shift to it, which is really unique. But I love that the glitters don't make a mess on your face. You don't need to put a glitter glue or anything underneath. I, I still didn't get glitter fallout, but it just is the finishing touch to a look if you want the glimmer. And I've been loving glimmer, you will see this month, just because of the time of year. So this shadow really came in and saved the day. Love it, had to pointed out to you guys. The next eyeshadow palette that I have that I discovered this month is the Florisys Oriental Shine Makeup Palette. I believe at this point 
the sponsored video that I did for it should be up, but I was super duper in love and I just wanted to reiterate just because it was a sponsored video didn't mean that my reaction wasn't genuine. It really, really was. This palette is absolutely gorgeous. Now for today's look, I stuck with mostly the mattes and the mattes in here, they are fine. They're very easy to work with. They're buildable. I find them to be very beginner friendly. They're not going to give you bang packed pigment, but they're going to be very easy to work with. But the shimmers here were just so pretty. It's very, very, very very fine sparkles and I just loved the looks that I've created with this palette so thus far. It's very easy to use. This is by far my favorite palette Floristus has come out with. The packaging is absolutely divine and the color story, it's not unique but it's really inspiring to me. It's within the tones of looks that I love to create. I definitely recommend you check out that video where I featured this to see the look that I created because it was gorgeous and I love this palette. The only flaw to it is just that the best color I feel like are too small. I need them in bigger forms. The last eyeshadow palette that I tried this month that I wanted to share with you in my favorites is the Tom Ford Lava Luster Quad. Ooh, I'm so excited about this. I've been not sure about Tom Ford. They really didn't have any bangers this year, honestly. They weren't like kind of wah 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 this year, but they finished off with this. So this is a brand new formula from Tom Ford. It's a glimmery, glittery kind of formula. On my eyelid, I'm wearing these three shades right here and can't you I've been loving the glitters this month so this isn't a Pat McGrath labs kind of glitter look the Pat McGrath labs will kind of put this to shame if I'm being honest but it's the best glimmer formula that we have from Tom Ford and it is so stunning it's a step up from the glitter that you're gonna get in the Floristus, but it's a step down from Pat McGrath. But I like this because I get little to no fallout with this. Again, I don't need a glitter glue, and I just really love the way that these look. This is a great glimmery kind of formula. Tom Ford has never come out with anything like this, and I am so ecstatic. And part of the reason why I probably love it so much is I'm sitting in front of my studio lights, and I'm like, wow, so pretty. But it does look pretty in everyday life as well, but I've been really excited about this palette. We finally got another banger from Tom Ford this year and <laughs> I've kind of pushed you away from most of his quads that he's come out with just because they haven't been very good but this is one that I'm really really excited about. I want this formula in a lot of other colors not just warm shades so hopefully we can get like a cooler version of this keeping this quality consistent to what we have in this quad because it's great. I actually spent a lot of time this month testing REM or REM Beauty, which is Ariana Grande's makeup line, not even because I was excited about it, but the package came the week that Jose's parents came, and so I didn't even want to think too hard about the makeup that I was using. So I had the whole collection laying out on my desk, so I used it like every day. So I got really well versed in the REM Beauty stuff, but I have to say something that I continue to reach for is the eyeliner. So this is the REM Beauty eyeliner marker. There is a flaw to it. So first of all, the formulation in here is literal perfection. I cannot tell you anything wrong with the formula here. It doesn't budge. It's nice and black. It's not too watery. It's just perfect. The only thing is I, I don't like the applicator. This white part right here is a little bit too thick, so it makes it hard for me to really get a nice even line. Even today, I kind of struggle to get my wings to look good but the actual formulation once you get the look down that you need oh it's so perfect I just wish the tip was a little bit different it just the ugh. I don't like the design of the actual marker itself but dang what they got in the inside is amazing I love it I recommend this eyeliner next up I have a lip liner kind of this is from makeup forever this is their artist color pencil and I picked this up at Sephora this is the shade Anywhere Caffeine. It's kind of like a neutral mauve shade. It's very, very pretty. I actually love the consistency of these pencils. They've been around for a while, but I never tried them before. They're a little bit more on the waxy side as opposed to a creamy side when it comes to lip pencils, and I really, really like that. Uh, I just love this shade, and these are supposed to be really great pencils that you can do a lot with. They blend out very easily, but they do set very nicely as well. So I am interested in picking up more shades of this, but in terms of the kind of lip color that I like for a lip liner. I love this. It's cooler, so it's going to give you a little bit of a contour, but it leans a little bit more purpley 
and like warm purpley compared to the other contoury shades that I have. I just like that change. It's a beautiful everyday lip liner. It's going to go with so many of the other everyday lipsticks that you have. So I highly recommend checking out this color and this formulation in general. So the last makeup item that I have to share with you today is the lipstick that I wore for Christmas Eve dinner, which is a big deal. That's the only time I see people. I don't see people on Christmas, really, except for my um, immediate family. Uh, but I wore the Maybelline Super Stay Matte Ink in the shade Pioneer. And not necessarily this color is what I want you to pick up. I just want you to try this formula. If you are wearing a mask or you are eating dinner, this is the only product that I guarantee you will stay exactly how it looked before you started eating or before you wore a mask. I don't know what is in this formula, but dang, your lip color is not going anywhere. Now, it's not the most comfortable lip color. If you cannot stand a little bit of a, like a drying feeling, maybe don't use this, but Oh my gosh, for any event, your lip color's not going anywhere. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I wore the shade Pioneer. This almost has more of a berry undertone to it. So sometimes you look at it and it looks red. Sometimes you look at it, it looks a little bit more pink. So I don't love this color. It was perfect for Christmas Eve. But just this formula in general, I'm... <sighs> Amazing. It amazes me every time I wear this, but I was just thinking for wearing a red on Christmas and eating and all of that good stuff and this still didn't budge. Super impressed. And you know how when you eat, and it's especially embarrassing when you're wearing red, you'll get like a line right here. Maybe that's just my anatomy. I don't know in the way that I eat, but I always get like red right on my chin. I didn't have that from Christmas dinner with this, so thank you. And there we have it, you guys. Those were all the products that I've been loving in December. December was crazy. So I actually think because I did so many targeted videos for specific products, I didn't get to really love on the makeup that I was using and choose my favorites. But these were products that either I did wear for the occasion and I just loved it and had to tell you guys or I just kept coming back to in the background. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. What were your favorite products for the month of December? Let me know and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.